All right, let's do this one last time. Now, standing on business, to take care of your business slash obligations, to be about your grind, blah, blah, blah. When faced with a situation, you handle it. And you already know we're going to rank anime characters from bronze to Hall of Fame SLB badge. I don't know why I couldn't think of it. Let's go. Now, this man Gojo is the definition of standing on business, bro. Like, ever since a teen, matter of fact, a jit, he been standing on business. And he really had no choice, because they said when he was born, the balance of the world shifted. Like, he, he had no other options, for real, bro. Like, as a kid, this man was walking down the streets and had the ops shook just by looking in their direction, man. Like, they ain't even want to try nothing. They knew what he was about. And if you didn't realize, there's a reason why Gojo always fights alone, bro. Like, he don't abide by the JJK jumping But frick it, let's get into some specifics of why why he stands on business. Cause the first moment I wanna talk about is when he spun back on Toji, bruh. Cause first of all, it's really the principle of why he was standing on business in this moment. Like he got brutally murdered the first time they fought, getting slashed in his forehead down his chest and still spun back. That's, come on now. Like this was a moment where Gojo probably should have been traumatized, but he said, no, he gonna spin back and get the greatest get back of all time. How many times did I just say get back? All right, next point. Now my next point is the fact that Gojo is just a smoke fiend, bro. Like he wants to fight the strongest possible. And I knew bro was SLB certified when we seen him the first episode. So give Sakuna that free fade trial, dog. Like he really toyed with him. I mean, of course it was one finger, but he toyed with him. Speaking of toy with him, let's talk about when he does to Jogo. Now, Gojo really treats Jogo like a punching bag, bro. And I don't know why they name so close, but still, there's probably the contrast, the juxtaposition between them. Like, every time he sees this man, he just violates. Like, Gojo even brought his student just to show how he was about to body this man, bro. He put on an exposition, uh, an all-star game. Uh, like, he was really instilling this standing on business mentality to his young bulls, bro. And that's why he let Jogo free, of course, just so he could see him in Shibuya and give him the work again, man. Because, hey, in Shibuya, this was Hall of Fame SOB Gojo right here, bruh. He was bloodlusted, straight trying to go for kills, man. He had everybody shook. Matter of fact, he had me behind the screen shook. Hey, and I would talk about Manga Gojo, but everybody not caught up, so let's get it. Hall of Fame SOB badge. Come on! Now, for our next character, we got... Nope, not him. But him, this dude who was leading the charge against Madara, cause what in the world? Like that man right there is a dangerous man, bruh. Cause who was running head first into Madara leading the charge like that? Not me. Personally, I'm not going. Not even Naruto was in front. Like this man had to know he was gonna get body, but instead he was standing on business and said, frick it, let's do it, man. Hey, that's that's Miss School Hall of Fame standing on business. And apparently he survived, but this is a little mean. Let's move on. So now we got Thorfinn, the chief captain of standing on business, bruh. From wait until he gets strong enough to Avengers, follow the solo squad in Vikings, man. He is SOP, the embodiment. Like, it's the fact that this man Thorfinn was doing anything just to get a 1v1 with bro, to the point where Askeladd was like, hey man, bring me the captain's head and we can 1v1. And you know what Thorfinn did? He solo squatted the whole team and took the captain's head off, bro. He was just that guy. And this isn't even the most extreme extent he went, because this man went against this unit of a human Thoracle just for a chance at a 1v1, bro. And it's the crazy, because this man Thorfinn was literally on go from the jump, man. No pun intended. Like, he didn't care how big Thoracle was, how much of a dog he he was he just wanted smoke and wanted his 1v1 standing on business man like and if fighting him once wasn't enough this man fought him for a second time mind you he had a broken arm too like what is going on but moving on even adult Thorfinn as a pacifist was still standing on business when it came down to it for example Thorfinn really showed he ain't need no sword to be strong because he was 1v1 in this man snake no weapon and snake had Mihawk's freaking black blade trying to get this man to work but Thorfinn was giving him the work you feel me bruh but none of these compared to when he had no enemies and took a hundred punches to protect his land, his peace, his man, shut up, just give him Hall of Fame SB badge. Moving on. So, as we continue, we have this man, Escanor, and this man might be standing above business because y'all know how he get down. And I got two moments to cover. And the first one being when Escanor wasn't taking any type of disrespect in his bar. Like, my boy really got pulled up on, knocked out, and then when he woke up, he was a new man and introduced himself. He told Gallon straight up he didn't like the way he was moving on his establishment. And so Gallon was just like, let's play a little game, my man. <laughs> and Gallon was like, we're going to attack each other, and the last one alive wins. But if you run you turn to stone bro and you know Escanor wasn't running because this man really tanked Gallon's attack with nothing but a scratch and when Escanor was like my turn this man Gallon was too scared and ended up turning into stone like he broke his own rules of the game like Escanor didn't care he was eating those and not only that but Escanor's soul was standing on business because Shorty tried to eat his soul <laughs> yo Try to eat his soul, bruh. She ended up burning. She was like, it's too hot. <laughs> and the last moment for Escanor is when he bullied Meliodas' his big bro. Lil' bro, I don't even remember, bruh. And so when Escanor stepped up, bro, he basically called him trash, weak, a bum. He said he's not on his level, for real. And big Meliodas ain't like this, so he ended up piecing up Escanor just for this man to eat all his attacks. And then when he hit him back, hey, Escanor gave him after effect damage, had him fall to his knees at Walmart. 
And then Escanor was like, did you drop some Pokemon cards on the ground or something? Like, you nah, he didn't really say that. But it's a long story short, I'm going to put it like this. Escanor spawned in the sun and put bro on a t-shirt because he's just that guy. He stands on business as we know. And the thing about Escanor is that he just really talks smack the whole fight because he has that much pride in himself, that much confidence that he's just better than everybody for real. I mean, he talks crazy, backs up his talking and fights whoever that's standing on business. I, and I'm going to give him gold because I feel like he, he has no reason to all the time, but I'll give him gold. Now, next we got this man Trunks, bro. And Trunks is a legend like he's had it the hardest in dbz but he still handles his business all the time and so when trunks put up on freezing the gang i knew he was beyond sob man like he came from the future to handle the ops man and i know when the first time we seen him i thought he was crazy i'm like why is he stepping to freeze like this who even is this guy but he proved he was like that like he was really having a field day with these guys, showing how much of a dog he was. Like murking everybody, then tanking Frieza's attacks, man. And he even caught Frieza's finishing move like it was a basketball. Then not only that, he tanked the explosion. Like it was a whole nuke dropped on his head. Then we can't forget he started throwing up gang signs, showing he was a crip. Like he let everybody know. Then he did one of the coldest scenes of all time, all anime, and sliced Frieza up like deli meat, bro. Somebody call Ice Spice. And if that wasn't enough, he completely violated King Cole. Like he had this man's pride dropped everything. Like bro was begging for his life and wait and I, I didn't even mention that he caught his sword bro like how you catch somebody's sword bro trunks was on a business trip that's all i'm gonna say he obliterated bro hey now but it wasn't completely like this for the android situation even though he was standing on business holding his own regardless i mean he got beat up he lost some loved ones bro but when he spun back in that black tank that was like the venom symbiote a shiesty on or something i don't know trunks was different and this was peak sob trunks because he wasted no time killing these androids like if every z fighter fought like this in dragon ball we might not have that many episodes and I almost forgot to mention when Trunks woke up out of sleep on Go when he thought Goku was Goku Black, bro. Like, this scene was fire. I mean, Goku caught that punch like nothing, but it was still fire. He was on timing. Hey, we gonna give Trunks Go that's a beat badge because he did sort of kind of run back to the past because I would have went out with Gohan, you feel me? But still, he's he's staying on business. Now for Aaron Yeager. I I can't believe I just did that, bro. I might just end the video. But yeah, for Aaron, it's pretty self-explanatory, but we gonna break it down anyway. Now, Aaron takes stand on business to new extremes. <laughs> Killing her. <laughs> First example is when he found out his dogs was trying to backdoor him. Like, he seen this man Burt crashing out on the bridge, and he knew it was over with, especially when they started transforming. And so Aaron got snatched up, and he was just emotionally scarred, but like, he didn't know what was going on. He had his little flashbacks in his pain, but in the second he knew he had to stand on business, he stood on it, and then he transformed on my man. And not only that, but he had that fist ready for him out the sky, mid transform Formation, bro, and this is what I'm talking about. This is SOB ness. And speaking of Reiner, this wasn't the only time Aaron stood on business around, bro. And fast forward, because I remember when Aaron was just chilling in the room with Reiner and Falco, just chatting. They was having a little chat, bro. And Reiner was scared for his life. Everybody's well being honestly. Because he knew Aaron was playing no games, bro. Long hair Aaron was a different breed. It was really the equivalent to him having a shy on. And so long story short, this man Aaron transformed while shaking bro's hand. He said, I don't care about Falco or everybody else here. He popped out the cut while and going berserk at the Eldian Opera rally man like this was a diabolical get back but i, I kind of love this scene i won't lie to y'all and like i was saying about long hair aaron he was acting out of body once he grew his hair out bro like first of all he had peak telling her she wouldn't pull the trigger then he was escaping prison and let's talk about when aaron was whooping armin just to prove a point and assert who was the king man he said you're the king no i'm the king <laughs> but actually i don't even think aaron being an armin was sitting on business this was kind of just brutal bro but yeah aaron throughout the show was doing whatever to hold it down he was never scared or never cared when it came to handling his business and that's why he's on this list bro and of course the fact that Aaron was figuratively and uh, literally stepping on anybody who wasn't him or the squad was insane but um we gonna let that slide because it's Aaron Hall of Fame standing on business bro and if y'all made this far follow the Instagram to stay up to date with everything and through crew 5L hope you enjoyed the video god bless we out